The purpose of this video is to go through an acronym that I've coined called LENS and when we go through that acronym that will really help you get consistent images within Midjourney from a cinematic standpoint. But if you want a primer to creating cinematic images beforehand, I did create a video so this video in particular will be building off of my last video so if you haven't already feel free to check that out above, I'll link it above in the card. So now let's crack on with this one. The first part of the acronym of LENS which is simple simply locating your keyword. For locating your keyword, you want to use language that Midjourney understands and it knows straight off the bat what it is that you intend to have Midjourney create for you. So an example could be using words like cinematic still, footage from, cinematic shot. All of these words Midjourney understands and it says, ah, oh, okay, this guy wants to create a cinematic shot. He wants to have footage from a particular movie in the style of, and so it gets the picture and so it goes forth with it. So that's the first part of it locate your keyword. Now we get into the second part which is simply entering a genre like thriller for instance would pick up on suspense as being the primary emotion. If it was horror then of course the intention there is to scare and then if it is action you'd be seeing someone do a high octane action stunt. Tom Cruise comes to mind and you know the Mission Impossible franchise there. So that's that entering a genre. Now we get into the third part of the acronym which is called naming a director. Now when you name a director Director. Usually specific directors within Hollywood have their own unique styles, their own distinct color palettes that they like to use. A director that comes to mind quite frequently for myself is Denis Villeneuve, you know, especially with him making Blade Runner 2049. It was very distinctive with his color palette, you know, he had loads of shades of neon throughout the film. So that was really quite interesting. So if you want to replicate those types of color tones, then yeah, you just simply enter in a director. And then lastly, S is simply Simply seeing it over. Are there any mistakes in your prompt? Is there any grammatical errors? Technical grammatical errors that is and as well as English grammatical errors as well because if there are then you know Midjourney can't do the best job it can do. It won't even produce the prompt to begin with. I'll also be showing you a snapshot of my settings so you know you can get to grips with that and to see what settings I used exactly to generate images that I'll show you shortly. So that brings the lens acronym to an end to go over it again. L is for locating your keyword. E is for entering a genre, N is for naming a director, and S is for seeing it over. So now I'm going to hop on a screen share session with you and walk you through what other aspects you need to consider layered on top of this particular acronym and then lastly show you the examples of what that generates. So stick around and let's jump to the screen. So now let's see a basic example of this acronym in action. Down below I've got the keyword of film still that I've used, genre of sci-fi, uh, director Ridley Scott and then lastly we want to see it over does it make sense, a sci-fi film still of an otherworldly landscape in the style of Ridley Scott under a two moon sky and that's what it came back with. But then there's also some other aspects to consider if you want a little bit more control over your prompts in mid journey. For instance describing the scene and time of day given a scene description so in this part you describe the setting or scene you want to depict and specify the time of day which can help set the mood. Now style and shot description so this is where you can mention specific stylistic elements you want to include such as camera angles, movements, color grading or specific directorial styles you know really Scott being one of them. So some examples are long shot, medium shot for camera angles, monochromatic sepia tone and retro style so for instance cinematic shot types here you get you know these different types of shots so low angle is that High angle is that, Dutch angle, I've not heard of that. <laughs> Overhead shot, eye level and shoulder level. So there you are like cinematic shot types or your camera shot types if you will. And then you get also different aspect ratios that you can try out as well. I typically try out 21 by 9, that's usually the sweet spot from what I find. But you can try out 16 by 9 equally if you want to as well. There's also color grading examples as well. So this is like an example of sepia tone, uh, monochromatic. So like in Matrix, that's a great example there of a monochromatic color scheme. You know, all of those colors that are laid out. You get various different styles, of course, and depending upon what color grade you want to put within your prompt as well. So that's that aspect ratio, shot types, and 
specific types of color grading. Now you can have like additional info or parameters. So parameters are explained briefly with aspect ratios. Additional info could be things like what the character is doing in the scene. What are they surrounded by? What type of costume are they wearing? And set design and many more aspects there. So there you have it. Those are the other aspects that you should consider as part of the acronym. So before I go in and show you some examples of what I have created, I'm going to now show you my settings that I use to create them. So these are my settings that I had in mid journey. I'm using 5.1, got stylized very high. I'm not using raw mode. If you're going for something quite basic, it's usually done best without raw mode. But if you're going for more complex details, more of an advanced prompt, then I would recommend raw mode. So that's that. So here are some examples. Imagine prompt, a movie shot of a couple sharing a quiet moment in a busy New York cafe at dawn in the romantic and authentic style of Woody Allen, captured on black and white Ilford HB5 film, known for its classic and timeless look. So this kind of graininess, that kind of visual aesthetic there is what I was going for. So it, it did a good job in my opinion. And then this is the thumbnail that you clicked on, of course. So a cinematic shot of a psychological thriller featuring a clown causing chaos in a bustling city at midday in the dark and gritty style of Todd Phillips shot on a Kodak Vision 3 500T 5219 known for its natural color palette and fine grain. Highlight the contrast between the character's colorful appearance and the grim reality around him. And now if we look that up Kodak Vision as a shot type so we'll see just like that it wasn't completely representative of what I had envisioned for it but it was fairly close and that's that there now we get into the last prompt which is a cinematic still of an action thriller featuring a daring spy sneaking into a high security facility at midnight in the slick and dynamic style of Christopher Nolan shot on a large format IMAX film known for its resolution and detail emphasize the intricate technology and tension of the scene so I think that looks pretty epic that could be be like an opening sequence to a film and these are obviously these colors are very representative of that IMAX type of look and feel so I think it's done a pretty good job there so there you have it that is the end of this particular guide you can click on the link to this in the description I'll link it down below I'll grant you access of course if you request it to view that way I know at least how many of you actually want to click on this and therefore how many of you would like to see these types of guides in the future so thank you for watching if you found this valuable at all subscribe and like that would be really appreciated and help the channel grow accordingly we're nearly a third of the way there of my goal of reaching a thousand subscribers by the end of the year so thanks a lot for watching and see you next time